Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. We're going to get into some rank grind, but I also want to do some buying, some cards, bargain hunting. We're going to get into peak monsters. We're going to try and explore some cards that I think are really undervalued and really powerful, especially for the price point. And be, you won't be surprised to see that it's going to be primarily focused around the newer reward cards, which are saturated in the marketplace. So let's get into it. So... I've been very busy. I haven't been able to play my daily quest. We're going to try and do this, but this is the this is not a grind video primarily. This is going to be like we're looking for bargains. We're just going to do this in the background and hopefully we can accomplish the, the, the daily quest while we're spending some money, while we're looking for some great deals. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dwayne. I go by Infidel1258 and we cover Spender Lens all day, every day because it's changed my life and I think it can change yours. It rewards us for our time and attention which is amazing and wonderful and life-changing. Gives you non-fungible tokens and cryptocurrency for having in-game success. And those are deflationary assets, which means that they rise in price as they, the supply lowers and the demand grows, which is exactly how this game was designed and intended and what those assets are almost built to do. And so that's why I'm so excited and passionate about this game because I've seen it happen firsthand. My deck is currently worth a hundred and let's see, 125, I'm guessing. I go over to 129,914 US dollars. That's for cards that have accumulated over three years, investing maybe 5,000 to 7,000 dollars, probably 5,000 because I, I put, um, and it was largely cryptocurrency that I had earned like Steam working on the Steam blockchain, as well as uh, later hive and then what else even basic attention token that i was earning by browsing the internet and if you don't use brave browser you should especially if you're not already a crypto whale i make five or ten dollars a month just using google searches that are through my brave browser and you could too and those those sort of rewards if you understand what they are can really flip your your financial future and that's what this game will do because these assets come to you for a few hours of time and attention you receive these cards that have a trivial dollar value associated with them but then after time these cards get they get burnt their supply lowers and the at the same time while the demand grows as the player base grows and so you see cards go from 18 cents to like over a dollar or from one cent to $30. Torhilo is a card I just sold a few copies of. Torhilo something or other. What's it called? I just sold three copies of Torhilo, um, which is a, a main tank for the blue team. Sold them for $34 each, as you can see there. And I sold two to this guy and one to this guy. And these cost me like a penny. So certain cards, not every card, certain cards are going to appreciate wildly and other cards are going to appreciate more conservatively but they're all they're all the same in that they there's only a limited number ever created and there's an increasing demand based on the player base not every card is a that perfect storm of you know amazing overpoweredness that everybody ends up desiring not every card is meta, but those cards that you get for free by playing this game that that turn into these Torhilo types or, you know, recently I was talking about how I was selling some of these um, Kelp Initiates for $14.50 up to $20 per. These cards, again, just a couple of pennies before. And so that's the power of this game. And, th and that's one reason why if you... Uh, don't play this game you should but also like I mentioned if you don't use brave browser you should download it because it's going to reward you just by clicking on ads and you're going to see those ads using the internet regularly so why not at least click on them for your own personal benefit that's what I've done for years now and it that is another example of how your time and attention can be rewarded if you're looking for those opportunities and it starts actually with you identifying that it's that your time is actually worth something because not everybody gets that that's the first recognition that you need to that you need to have but if you have that then start looking for opportunities like splinter lands like brave browser and there are others that are going to be able to give you those sorts of seemingly trivial rewards 
but that will appreciate with time or that can be snowballed into bigger investments such as you can get those bat tokens monthly and then put them into monster cards and those monster cards can appreciate and then you can sell those down the road and then reinvest that value and on and on and on and grow it from five thousand dollars worth of cards into 130. that's what i've done that's why i like this game that's why i'm passionate about it and you know why i'm constantly talking about it here so without further ado let's load up a game and we're trying to do the sneak attack and at the same time let's come over here and browse so i did just buy a couple cards i bought lava launcher i bought a gold foil lava launcher for 90 dollars, and i bought a regular foil with four copies in it for 15 bucks what i think which i think is an absolute steal that's like you know let's just do the math correctly 14 point eight nine six divided by four three dollars and seventy cents per bcx which is ludicrous for this card my card no no i so we come over here to epics and we're in the rewards there it is lava launcher but if you just look at all epics forget about rewards it's the cheapest reward card out there at the epic level period to me that that deserves notice by itself but this also it, additionally it's an amazing card and it's potentially a carry card and a cornerstone of a winning team i say it's a carry card because by itself it could win games it's got significant hit points huge armor even at the lowest level and then it's an archery unit so how can that be a carry card how can that win battles by itself well it starts off with close range close range is that ability that allows your archer to sit in the first position and still fire that's actually unique or rare let's say let's it's it's rare and as it gets higher in the levels it gets so much more powerful including things like stun and higher hit points as well as massive amounts of damage and if you were to combine something like this with like uh with yodin and as far as i'm considered concerned yodin is the play for fire so i just feel like this card is not being appreciated as the level that it will be especially in six months when it's no longer being in circulation get over here and load the team <laughs> crypto class action knights sneak attack sneak attack Hmm. I think I gotta pass on the sneak attack and just go Kron here. Right? With the play. Yeah. Give that a shot. Okay. Um so I love this card. I think it's really, really inexpensive. And one of the ways I judge that is because it's the cheapest epic card in the game. Another way I judge that is that it has great utility in that it could literally be your tank, it could be your solo card for a given battle and allow you to win. Now, is it the best solo card? Of course not. Better solo, so, uh, A better solo card is right here. Jin Chwala, if you're going to play one monster, this is the sort of card that would be a very interesting card to throw out there. It's got Again, it's got high hit points and including significant armor. It's got a relatively low melee damage, but it's going to be functional and it's going to be, especially in bronze, that's going to, that's going to be significant. But the thorns is the tricky part, the, the, the like the icing on the cake. Um, and so I would argue that at $4 and 72 cents, that's a really great deal. In fact, I will buy that one because look, it's a little bit cheaper. It's about 10% cheaper, something like that. The, five dollars to see these ones are five dollars or four dollars and ninety cents so yeah it's about five or ten percent cheaper or something than the next cheapest one and then if you compare it to these which are five dollars and thirty cents it's a lot cheaper go so buy that one right off the bat and that's the sort of card you could flip like look at that card okay that card cost me twenty dollars or nineteen dollars and ninety cents and it was five four ninety seven there's four bcx in there and it could sell for roughly five dollars and thirty cents. So I could immediately realist it for a dollar or twenty-one twenty. And I would get right. I would no, okay, I wouldn't make very much. That's not worth it because you have to take into consideration the 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 five percent cut that peak monsters would take. 
So, but it's still a great price. Like for a card that I'm going to buy and hold, it's a great price. Did I get it? Did it go through? I always got to check because sometimes the, the sale doesn't go through because somebody else beats you to the purchase. No, it doesn't look like we got it. I'm going to go back there and have one more peek. Is it still there? Oh, look at that. There's another one. No, it's the same one, right? I want them both if I can. I don't know what happened there, but I think it's working this time. Let's, I'm going to check and confirm. Okay. So I got the more expensive one, but I didn't get the cheaper one. That's okay. It was a good price. It was the same price per BCX. It just had one more copy in it. And cards like that. Um, so again, why do I like cards like that? They are amongst the cheapest cards within their class, within their rarity, in, within the epic range. Second, they're functional in the first position. That's so important because if you have a low mana match, you can put them in the first position and they can fight by themselves. And they have certain abilities that allow them to be successful in that position. Both of them had a good amount of armor, good amount of hit points, and a good amount of damage output. But then the um, um, the Lava Launcher is... is I actually like this better than Jin Chihuahua in a, in some sense, especially in higher mana matches. Because something like this is great in a low mana match where you can get your low... You, if you're in bronze, you throw this out there, it's probably going to steal you some wins. But a card like this in bronze or silver, when you get those opportunities to sort th th for like a 30 or 40 mana team, this is going to this is going to give a great amount of damage output from a third or fourth position. And it's going to, even if your front end gets blown up in the battle, this is going to find its way to the first position and it's going to continue shooting, giving you that... Um, unique ability to come from behind and, and win. Usually archer monsters, if they go from their last position to the first, now they're dead and they're useless. They just sit there and take hits. Not this guy. So I love having him on my fire team, especially since fire is so inundated with uh, with archers that don't have that ability or that extremely powerful, but they have low hit points, such as pyromancers, such as pyromaniacs, such as imp bowmen, and the list goes on and on. Fire demon general the, all of these archers are great archers but the, none of them have that the heavy armor none of them have that close range and those are just a few there's actually several more the point this is like for me this is like a quarterback of a of a of a yoden team let's go watch that battle and all this dec that i'm you know, looking to attribute or reinvest is coming from my investment, my, my sale of vouchers over the last few days. And, and like, I guess I showed, I sold a few Torhilos, I sold, sold a few Kelp Initiates. We should be okay, right? Yeah, we should be okay. He's not going to be able to out heal my damage output. And I'm going to do significant heals. Yeah, we're going to be just fine. There it is. Easy. Easy. 57 DC for that win. Let's keep chopping. So. They're great cards because they are very inexpensive. They're great cards because they potentially allow you to win games. Um, they're also great cards because I, because I think people don't fully understand the value proposition. And, and so I anticipate more appreciation of the price as time goes on when people start to realize really what they're capable of um, and then additionally they're good purchases because they're in print right now and while cards are in circulation there's a there's a glut of supply which affects prices because if you know anything about basic economics supply versus demand affects the total price that you need to pay at this point there's a massive amount of supply for all of these reward cards because they are currently in circulation and they will be for several months more but i'm going to play this game for several years and and in the time that i own these assets i will watch them go out of print 
And I've seen time and time again where that that happens, the, the, the price transforms. This is a card that recently went out of print. They were selling for roughly five to seven dollars per BCX. Now the low BCX is $29. Right there, $28, $29. This is a card that was selling for five dollars at the I want to say a month and a half ago. And in some of my videos, you'll see me showing that during the kind of the exploding, exciting um viewer growth of this channel. Uh, I've seen this card go from $5 to $30 per BCX. And I have no doubt that could happen again. Yes, the Axe Master has less print, less total supply than some of these newer reward cards. That is an important understanding. I'm not trying to, I guess, discount that reality. But in my opinion, the, gr the player base has grown roughly 40 times from when I remember playing it. Uh, 10,000 people per day, now 400,000 people per day. And these cards are 20 times more common. There's 20 times more copies. So I, as far as I'm concerned, the player base accounts for the extra supply. I need to get a sneak attacker in there. Put the skeletal warrior in the first position there because I wanted to give Lord of Darkness that meat shield to sit behind. I was, you know, in this type of uh, match where there's a significant amount of mana to play with and where I'm fighting at a diamond level, I can anticipate my opponent is going to throw some pretty big heat such as he has chosen to do, like with monsters such as Spark Pixies and, and let's say, Magnor. So this guy's going to get gobbled up pretty quick here. But the shield is going to allow him to probably eat this guy, eat Magnor's hit, I bet. Or maybe not. Because look, Pixies is going to hit me. He's not going to break the armor. Then I'm going to hit him. He's going to go in rage. He's going to break my shield. And then, yeah, I think he is going to, he's going to smack me hard. And then he's going to trample through. Um, but hopefully I get a retaliate and then a stun. I feel, I, I feel like I, I'm still going to be fine here, but that stun is going to be annoying. He's got double stun present, So he's going to hit for 22. I guess it's 11 because of shield. Now stun. Oh, a stun would have been very important there. And then he stunned me. Oof, that's annoying, people. That's annoying. Well, it's over now. Cool. No retaliate, no stun. Make Dwayne a dull boy. Okay. So that's my view on these. And I'm going to keep buying them until, until they go you know, out of print. I, I love uh, these epic cards, these epic reward cards, like Lava Launcher is a game changer, Jin Renova, game changer, Guala, game changer. Um, Uraeus, excellent, excellent sneak attack. Neutral monster, which is so powerful because neutral, of course, plays with all your splinters. But I feel less passionate about that one. It's not going to be a game changer to me in the same way that these ones are. Is it going to help you tremendously? Yes. For three mana cost, that it's neutral, that it can play with any of your splinters, that it's very powerful. This is an excellent card. But it's, but to me, it's not going to, it's not going to decide victory or defeat. Like there's already a lot of sneak attack monsters that you can usually formulate a very powerful sneak team if that's what you're looking for without this guy. But if you're playing white and you want a magic build, Jin Renova is going to be really helpful with the strengthen and the triage. Very helpful. 
plus four magic damage at high levels or two right out of the gate, making it very effective at bronze or higher level play. Like I said, Lava Launcher going to be great at bronze and all the way up to to um, to the ch highest levels of champion. Same in Chihuahua. Low level, fine. Going to win. Absolutely going to win in bronze. And then so is it at higher levels. We were talking about these reward cards. So I like these epics a lot. I think they are going to... They can, they can really redefine the power that you have within your deck. And so to me, that makes them an excellent investment. Come on. I got through just in time, eh? But there's more here, right? There's more. There's this is just epic. The rares are amazing, also. And they're still so cheap, guys. These are cheap. I remember the Twilight Basilisk has ranged when it came out. It was roughly forty cents. Now it's around seventy. Of course, it's a big increase. But these cards have not seen the appreciation that some of those epics have. And the commons, I guess we're going to talk about that for a moment. The commons, they came around seven cents and now they're up around 20. These are, that's big appreciation, but that's not where these things are going. And so, as you know, I've been just coming in here and buying, buying, buying. And I'm going to keep doing it. Let's go bulk. 50 of those. Bye. I don't, I feel less strong about the Venari Heatsmith, although I do like it. Bulk. Fine. Bulk. People like me are going to keep doing this until until you guys start coveting these things. Because you, I promise these prices will go. I mean, I don't promise. I promise nothing. But as you can see, I'm willing to put my own money there. And it's not because I want to flip it in a week. It's not because I think there's a short-term play here. It's because I believe in the long-term viability of Splinterlands and the attractiveness of the reward structure that is offered within this game. These that you that you are non-fungible tokens that are yours to keep, sell, trade, makes this game different. And I think it's going to keep attracting more people. I think it's going to keep growing wildly. I think these these numbers are nothing, and I think we're going to be at millions of accounts. Four hundred and forty thousand active players yesterday. I think there's gonna be four million active players it, soon. I don't know when, but soon. And I'm willing to wait and watch that happen. And I'm I'm willing to invest my own money to in the expectation that that will happen. Now, there is no guarantee in life, but this is an excellent game, and I'm willing to take a gamble on it. I'm in trouble because of the Goblin Chief. Which is an amazing uh, under uh, amazing card for three mana cost. The affliction alone is going to really cause me. Well, it's going to. It's I'm going to lose because of it. Because I have no cleanse, and even though I'm doing a fair bit of damage, he, there he is. Like he just wipes me anyways. Neek. $32 for 100 of these. I wouldn't be surprised if one day one BCX of this is $32. I'm buying 100 right now. The rares, again, very powerful cards. You know, we start to get a bit more expensive, but rightly so. These are good cards. I can I continue to feel really strong about the F breed elder, and I continue to think that this is probably going to be the fire is probably going to be the next magic deck, because like we've seen in previous summoners, 
Um, at first, green was the plus one heart team with Lyanna and Atura. That's the beta alpha summoner. She gives you plus one uh, hearts for the uh, for every monster in the green team. Then they moved Mother Kala in, who's an, a replica of that from the Untamed deck. And so they just reuse that ability. And now we know moving into Chaos Legion, when the, when they go modern versus wild, they're gonna you're not gonna be able to use Alric Stormbringer anymore. So who's gonna be the plus one magic? There's gonna be a plus one magic. So I'm actually pretty, I'm betting it's gonna be fire. I, I don't know that for sure. Nobody's told me that. I have no evidence to support that. It's just, I look at the monsters that they've given, they've equipped us with, and I think, I think they were thinking, wouldn't it be fun to turn fire into the magic team because fire has been so um, um, associated with melee damage over the alpha, the beta, and even untamed. But then they started to kind of introduce new, more magic focused monsters, such as that Efreet Elder. And so now, I, and, and also the Kaladim, which is that le legendary fire. Kaladim, where is he? Kaladim, Zan, uh, Zalran, Efreet, Elemental Phoenix is not new. Um, and like I said, that Efreet Elder that I showed you a moment ago. So. I kind of think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to see a from the Chaos Legion. I think you're going to see a rare summoner who will be three mana cost. And he's going to be a fire based magic summoner. And I also think, and so as a result, I think investing in some of these valuable some or uh, fire magic monsters might be a wise thing to do at this time. Not legendary; those are going to be too expensive. But what can we afford? This is the cheapest one, and I don't really get why he's two dollars. Like, wh how is Zal F F Breed Elder who comes out of the gate with eight hit points and last stand? How is this thing? lower or worse than say naga fire wizard naga fire wizard is about four times the value and this one has this one has very low hit points which makes it vulnerable to magic attack Yes, it's got shield and thorns, which so if you get if you walk and if you prepare yourself well and you counter your enemy's melee damage with this guy, that's great. But I don't think this is worth four times what F F Reed is. We're gonna buy a few. That's about it. For me. Thirty-seven dollars. Now I'm getting a little carried away here. I need to think about reining it in. Oh, but I, that's one thing I'm thinking is happening. I also am expecting a water summoner rare level who's going to offer melee buff to introduce that whole element flipping it on its head because who's been traditionally the magic monster? Blue. Team, the Splinter, water splinter has been that magic team. With And it starts with Alric. And then the monsters just... Th those monsters gl blow up in value, including the Sea Genie, who used to sell for a penny, and who, and by the way, who's a reward card, but now sells for individual copies at five dollars. This was a penny; it was less than a penny. So, I think they're going to be the new melee people, and in part, I say that because Demented Shark came out, and that's it's almost tilting the hat. Like that's that's the way we're going. Like with this Inspire, we had a level one and that would if if melee was their thing i think you'd see massive spikes in pelicor bandit demented shark all these cheapest ones i don't love the wave runner but if it had one more melee damage it starts to get pretty crazy at five at the highest levels or even three at the lowest level feasting seaweed is an excellent card and it's got the upper scavenge at level six that's like a gold or like a yeah that's a gold level 
Fertitian Fighter could be interesting if it had one more one more attack. But right here, you know, you know how I feel about this one. Super cheap. We need to buy another hundred. Another 20 bucks. No problem. But that's gonna be it for today with the purchases. Let's just play a few more games. That was that's a lot of money that I think I just spent. I spent 14,000 DC, I wanna say. 37. 70, 110, 130, 150, 160, 190, 270, probably 270 dollars. Plus earlier I bought these 81. That's about 350 bucks with the purchases, maybe more. Because I believe in the game. And so again, all of that, every penny of that came from sold vouchers. Chaos Legion vouchers selling for $15, $20 per. I want those packs, but I'd rather have more cards. I just bought hundreds of copies of cards. Those are cards that I'm going to carry forward and that I'm going to watch appreciate. And then one day I'm going to be able to sell and then reinvest. Of course, I wish I got the Chaos Legion packs. I want 2000 packs, but these vouchers just are too expensive for me at this moment. So I am just I'm adapting and I'm modifying my plan. I like my odds here. I got my repair. And I got the I got the archery reflect. Nice. The poison is helpful. Nice. Yeah, we got this for sure now. There's nothing to be done now. It's just a matter of time. We just gotta chip away the cube. Once we hit once I start slugging them and poison them, game over. I'm gonna be doing ten no, I'm gonna be doing twelve damage per turn. He's gonna be doing none. He's gonna be healing six, which isn't enough. It is. Okay, so that's sneak attack one. It was 60 DC. I'm not going to finish the sneak attack because it's just too many. Too many to do. Logos first. White. Hmm. Mm. I always forget about my Cyclops. Such an expense, such a powerful card when the rules of combat revert to slow. Maxed out Jin Renova? That's a mistake. Watch this. I don't know if you guys know this. You can quickly come over to your cards and you can go. I can look for my Jin Renova. Where is she? I don't. I don't have a maxed out copy. Do, do I have enough? I need five more. For sale. One, two, three, four, five. No, I can't take the ones that are. The ones with the, the clock, I can't take. And my battle is still unfolding, but I'm spending $21 to get those cards. And if I come back, I should have enough time to re-enter my team after still processing this. I don't know if I don't know if you guys knew you could do this. And I am a, I'm in a race against time here. But look, there's my max level, Jin Renova. Come on, come on. Okay, so we're maxed out. Now we can come back over here. We go to battle. We go refresh. And there, there's my battle. I'm running out of time really quick here, though. Look, I need him, him, her, her. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing?
Okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Needed there. That's it. He went for the repair mode, so I'm not shooting any armor really. Ooh, I wish I had shatter though. He's got triple heal and double repair. What a play. What a cheese play. No, no, he's got yeah, he's got repair with Lone Bowman. He's got repair with the summon. He's got triple heal. Um, and he's obviously doing the sneak attack play. If I can stun Shield Bearer because of this, the knockout, my magic will cut right to his heart and just delete. But he does have resurrect. He has double resurrect. So I could be in trouble just because of the the one sneak attack silver the assassin. But he's only going to be doing three damage. I'm silent or I'm demoralizing. Didn't stun. That's annoying. Okay. I think we're going to be okay. Even with his triple heals, we're going to just delete him again. Especially now that I. Yeah, I hit for eight there. Six there. He's going to re... And then we're going to kill him one more time. Boom. Magic for the win. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, you could do that. Even when you go into a tournament, even when you go into a brawl, you have when that clock starts ticking, you have the two minutes or the two and a half minutes to pick your team. And that includes all the cards you own. Now, you might not own that card yet. If you quickly start a game and you see that you can you can only play white and you don't have any white monsters to, to utilize you can rush over to the store if you're interested in doing that like you have to want to card don't just buy it or rent it for no reason but you could rush into the store and grab that one card you need that one summoner you need to transform the win and rent it quickly or buy it quickly if you if i had rented a max level copy of Jin renova i would have been able to activate it also but you need that you need at least a, a minute because you got to go be you got to get into peak monsters you got to open your account you got to find the card buy it or rent it um and then let that process hit the blockchain and then it once it does it's going to activate on your account and that card is there for you to play and part of the reason why we just won is because i had a maxed out Jin renova who was healing cyclops uh triage healing cyclops okay so we're going to leave it there thanks for your time and attention have an amazing day god bless Thank you.